All right, uh, we are recording. King, do you wanna wanna go? Yeah. Yeah. Put the minutes in the chat. Okay. Shaya, are you in school now? Oh, I'm still in my home. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will return back to school uh, at 27. Okay. Enjoy your holiday. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Morning, Shen. Uh, how about your hack song this weekend? Yeah, it's uh, 10 a.m. Beijing time on Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That day we are we are on uh, we are working that day. Yeah. You know, uh -oh. every month, uh, last uh, Saturday, Huawei is uh, <laughs> chopping that day, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I say it's a working day. Focus on the Kitty worker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. So shall we start today's meeting? I, I don't know, where's Matt? Uh, yeah, uh, we can get started. Uh, the first thing on the agenda, it looks like, is the spreadsheet. Um, yeah. I can share my screen. And um, so this, I don't know why it's not giving me the usual Google click. Oh, probably because it's a Microsoft document. Sean, I think you might be uh, in a different, like scroll up. Am I looking at the wrong document? Oh, oh there we go. It. Oh. Yeah, I scrolled down. Okay, value working group discussion. There we go. I was so confused. <laughs> so it's okay. I uh, I scrolled down too far. <laughs> so it looks like uh, the value working group is looking at enumerating dependent. No, wait a minute. Repository dependency enumeration, which is uh, something we the um, risk working group is working on. And these are some of the key performance indicators that are open um, in the issue for project management. And 
they are all related to repository dependencies, which is um, obviously something that we all care about. And I think, I think the reason this is on the agenda is we are curious if the Asia Pacific group is also interested in this. So these are projects that other projects might depend on. Wait a minute. Great. I feel like that is a doc link and I am in a, that would mean that took me to the wrong link. <clears throat> so this is, this is what we've been working on. And, um, I don't know if, if folks can't read it, essentially, we're looking at what projects does your project depend on? So upstream dependencies, we, we're being specific about my project depends on these other projects because <clears throat> upstream and downstream, people sometimes forget the meaning of. Um, and we want to understand essentially the libraries or the code that your project depends on. And most of the language for doing that, most of the languages for doing that are, um, lang most of the tools for doing that are language specific. Some languages don't have package managers like C++ or C. And we're trying to think about parameters like direct or indirects and consider there are, there are cases where they are static and dynamic and dependencies have different implications and also can be different at build time, test time, and run time. So um, filters are trends over time. And these are some of the tools that we started to enumerate that can get at those de that dependency information. So I, I first question I throw out is, uh, to what extent does this uh, seem like a metric that this group is interested in working on, participating in, have a stake in, um, or would like to uh, contribute to. I'm not hearing any response at all. Am I not? So <clears throat> perhaps uh, just this is for awareness. Unless I'm missing. I, yeah. I, I just have a quick question. Is this, um, I, I'm confused again. I'm so sorry. It, so this, um, the dependency stuff, is that the same as the uh, key performance indicators, um, like based on milestones and things like that? No, I think I copied that from the wrong day. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd scrolled okay. too far down to, uh, okay. yeah, okay. sorry. No, no, you're, you're fine. You're fine. So, um, so we have, I think, two separate things here so the first one is the um the like inner source corporate kind of uh metrics i guess you could say um things like you know if a milestone was achieved et cetera, et cetera, yeah. which was that github issue okay and then we have the dependencies um, yeah. that the risk group is talking about as well okay right and then there's this there is this kpi indicator on on this week's agenda <clears throat> Um, thinking about this from the perspective of inner source, which is a separate matter. And these are in this, I, I can put this link in the chat, if I can find the chat when I'm sharing the screen, always a challenge. Um, so, uh, you because there's a little bit of scrolling here, but essentially when we're looking at you know, key performance indicators from the project, obviously return on investment uh, is related to business financial impact and performance. Uh, milestone completion 
with time and budget considerations, then, then the course financial value is, could be, you, you can evaluate that using accounting measures, and, but there could also be stakeholder perception of value. So even if something isn't perceived as valuable by stakeholders, it could be a core piece of infrastructure that is absolutely necessary. And so um, business value and stakeholder perception value can be two different things. And stakeholder engagement or participation can be an indicator for performance that the you know if you have a high degree of stakeholder participation that suggests that they understand its importance want to ensure it's built the way that they intend for it to be built lower stakeholder participation may indicate that it's at a lower level of technology and perhaps isn't that well understood by stakeholders that doesn't necessarily mean it's not important of course but these are the <clears throat> Um, these are criteria that uh, we thought could possibly be directly related to inner sourcing of software. And so that's that's where the, these KPIs come from. Anyone else want to add or talk about that? Does this does this seem like an inner source? Uh, consideration, something that we might want to measure um, when we're doing inner source work. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, because <laughs> so, I don't yeah, do the inner source it, stuff. So is this a, is this kind of like a thinking out loud? Kind of thing that comes from value because I know that value has been working on like dependencies quite a bit yep. and thinking through the upstream and downstream dependencies. And so That's is risk this has been, risk has been doing? Oh, that. sorry, risk. Okay. Yep. And and so value is looking at these KPIs and are these? Yeah, I think. I think Kevin okay. had just was thinking out loud. So we opened this issue of all of the things that, you know, um, might be related to KPIs if a, if a, someone in the company is, is looking at that. Um, and so we thought because it kind of touched on inner source and that's a popular topic here um, that a lot of people care about that that might be those might be metrics that this group might consider working on or, or have an interest in, in developing out more. So I think gotcha. it was just, yeah, like this, just throwing some ideas out there to see if anybody um, wanted to take any of these and run with them. I don't think it has it's, much to do with dependencies, to be honest. Gotcha. It's okay. A no. separate thing. And no. so each one of these seven would be a potential candidate for a new metric. Yeah. Yeah. I see. And again, okay. I think it was just kind of Kevin's brainstorming of some, some, um, some metrics that were on his mind and thought he would just throw them out there and see what, where they landed. Yeah. Okay. So if yeah. nobody wants to work on them, that's totally fine. But yeah. <laughs> we yeah. just thought we would put it here because a lot of people care about that stuff. Here. So K KPIs have come up before, like in passing. I kind of remember there was a large conversation about them at um, at one of the chaos cons, the one in Vancouver, about how how we would think about metrics as associated with key performance indicators, but I don't think it really ever went much beyond. I think there was like a lot of people that were like, yeah, let's, let's do this, but. Um... I think there's uh, some different things about uh, uh, what's the health of the projects or the health of the community. I think the uh, inner source projects are also strongly driven by the project leaders. Uh, in the like the process scope or the uh, some the other quality or the other things, but in open source com communities, um, we also um, try to make some adoption or the other uh, working together. So uh, that's the differences I think. So in the KPI, I think it, we should try to. Uh, divided into different parts about project KPI or the community KPI. That's my opinion. That's a, that's a really interesting uh, comment. I'm gonna make a...
make that comment right there. Um, So I do think that's an interesting comment and yeah. kind of looking at this list. Um... I mean, they do, when you start to think about business, <clears throat> business financial impact or performance measure impact, um, these are all ways of measuring value. Uh, and I don't know if you were, you were listening to that, but I think uh, my ROI is basically looking at cost versus expenditures and benefits, but that is also another way of having, uh, looking at financial impact and business performance impact. Uh, each of these, I think, are measured over different periods of time. Um, ROI, I think, is usually a... a balance sheet, long-term view, and things like financial impact and business performance impact tend to be focused on income statements and short-term effects on a business's <clears throat> performance uh, in the immediate financial. In the U.S., the quarter is everything, the three-month period. I don't know if uh, the businesses that you all operate in think as short term as that or if the financial measurements are longer term um, but certainly each of those measures different period is it's thought about at different periods of time for their their financial effect and type of financial effect so i guess i have a question on this for the folks on the call mm -hmm. who are mm -hmm. at for-profit companies do when you're participating in open source at your companies do you calculate things like the engagement as an ROI or engagement as a financial impact, or is it just a way of doing work? You know what I mean? So for a long time, there was this push in open source to try to align open source engagement with some financial, some something financial. Like if, if we do this, then we make this amount of money, or if we do this, we save this amount of money. And um, I never saw anything in industry or in academia that, that ever did that, that could ever map engagement to some sort of financial return. And the best financial argument that I ever heard was, well, everybody else is doing it. So <laughs> we should yeah. probably be doing it too. Okay. Yeah. Um, like web companies, so, social media companies look at engagement, how long are their customers on a site as a financial impact, but open source software doesn't. So is, yeah, so has that, is that argument like sailed, like the, the metaphor, the ship has sailed, like, does that argument not matter anymore? You know what I mean? Like, do companies just say, I don't, I, we don't even, we're not even going to try to financially measure our engagement. It's just the way that we work. It's just, it's just the way it is. And I don't, we're certainly not going to do all of this work internally because that's just obviously more expensive but in terms of like the actual you know dollar or yen maybe it doesn't really matter that we get down to that do people have thoughts on this i think um roi could also just be maybe not entirely financial but the return that they're trying to measure would be uh for instance oh we have included X number of people in our community now for our open source project. Um, and to someone somewhere in management, that is a, a, that's a return on their quote unquote investment of allowing their developers or requiring their developers to work on these open source projects. So I don't know if it, I, I mean, I'm just guessing, but it may not have to be entirely financial. It could be some other form of uh, some other goal that management is trying to achieve could, mm -hmm. that could fit it under ROI, I think. Okay. Because I think that there are, like, obviously, I think that, you know, people in management want to make sure that they're putting their time and energy of their, their people in the right places. So I think that some sort of ROI is, is, you know, would be interesting to measure. And to also, they, if they have to justify to even higher ups 
the time that they're allowing their people to participate in open source, um, then then I think that, yeah, I mean, someone somewhere is going to care. <laughs> you know, that's just my opinion. I know at um, companies I've, I've been in in the past, um, the ROI that they were looking for or the, or the goal that they were looking for was that the open source project. So I guess it, I don't know, this might not relate, but um, the, 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 the um, rule was that you could participate in any open source project you wanted. It just had to be something that the company also depended on and used. So the ROI was like, how, how much did they improve that? that uh, open source project that the company is using, even though they didn't own it, um, that they were using. So the ROI was, you know, number of bugs uh, or number of issues, number of commits, like those kinds of things, they considered an ROI. Um, so that, yeah, that people were measuring that, that makes sure that, you know, the time that was spent because they were allowed, they were given time to, to participate during the work day on these open source projects, even though it was kind of a side thing. So, um, that's just an, an example of something that I've seen in a company. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, this is a uh, uh, interesting topic. Uh, before before this meeting, I, I've never think about this uh, R I uh, R I uh, the 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 rates. Uh, uh, about the uh, commercial company. So, um, uh, uh, for example, in my company, we don't uh, matrix the ROI uh, who, in uh, who involved in open source project. Uh, yeah, we will we, we just uh, to uh, uh, just uh, to because the open source uh, is a mode of the developer. It's not a mode of the uh, commu commu uh, commercial commercial mode, yeah. Uh, the uh, commercial mode is in the uh, en enterprise. Uh, open source is just, uh, in my opinion, it's just uh, a mode of the, the developer. Uh, so I think it's uh, it's hard. It's very hard to matrix uh, from this this aspect. Yeah. That's super interesting that that you look at the open source model as a way to it's a model for the developer. Is that what you were yeah. saying? That it's not necessarily a model that say Huawei subscribes to officially. Like it's not something that Huawei says we're going to do, but it's just a way of work at the developer end. That's, a, that's super interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, Matt, uh, in the uh, if we don't have open source project, we just uh, develop in the project mode, project developer mode. Uh, in, uh, you know the IPD, uh, the integrate the product uh, develop the process. You, you know, uh, if we uh, we uh, contribute into the in, in the open source project, we just follow the uh, develop uh, process in the. Com uh, community, so it, I think it's a, uh, it's a different uh, from the commercial commercial mode. Yeah. Over. No, it's just I don't think I've ever um, heard that stark differentiation before. So I think I've always considered, or at least everything I've heard has always been, even as the developers are engaging in open source, it's still ultimately goes back to the organization as some, some way of um, like uh, improving time to market or lowering development costs. Like there's always some, it always rolls back to the company. And so that's, I think that's interesting to me. Yeah, I think a lot of the ways it rolls back to the company though is sort of intangible. I mean, the way that, the way that VMware looks at this is that most of our products are in some way or another built on top of open source technologies. So technologies like Kubernetes, for example. And, and we see this as, as ways that, a way that companies can innovate 
you know, we've got these, these ecosystem layers that are sort of a, a base layer for us, and then we can innovate on top of it. But that does sort of come with contributing back to those products so that we are those open source projects so that we know what's going on, so that we can get features that we need, so that we can fix the bugs that we need to fix. And so we do see that we, you know, we need to be involved in the open source projects that we we rely on in order to ship our, you know, our commercial products. And that's so we see it, you know, as we see it as innovation, we see it as, you know, developer productivity, it gives us faster time to market. But those aren't necessarily things that you can measure the impact of open source. They're a bit more intangible. And so to that, on that comment, um, I think it might be hard to map it back to, I like, like it might just be a, uh, an endless game of trying to, <laughs> trying to map like commits all the way back to some organizational dollar. Yeah. Especially when you start thinking about contribution, because, you know, there's a big, there's a big difference, right? Like how do you measure and this, this stuff is just really hard to measure. You've got, you've got on the one case, we use these products because we build our products on top of them. So that's, that's one piece of it. But we also, you know, we could use them without contributing anything back, um, which isn't, isn't the model that we, we try to embrace. We do try to contribute back to the products that we use. Um, but but how, do you, how, do you, how do you measure that? I mean, how do you, when, even if you, look at, if you look at innovation, if you look at time to market, if you look at developer productivity, how do you separate the the open source bits of that from the commercial bits? Because you know we we ship a product on top of it. So how much of of what we get for productivity, for time to market, for innovation comes from the product, and how much of it comes from the open source project? And those are things that are effectively kind of impossible to measure in any way that we tangibly care about. Agreed. I think that's well said. Says, says the metrics person. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, I mean, I, I agree with that a hundred percent. And I think this is what I, I, to the earlier point, like I've never seen anybody be able to successfully navigate that, like map it back and sure people might want it, but I've never seen, like, it'd be cool, right? If you could maybe measure that all the way back and to your point too, Don, I, um, if, if you're engaging in open source, it would require a Kind of a contrast class case that says we're not participating in open source <laughs> and here's the team that's developed kubernetes by themselves internally <laughs> and here's the team that's using open source kubernetes and this is how much more efficient the open source team is it would require that as well and obviously you're never going to do that within a company and kubernetes being a totally weird example there but um all right So, um, I don't know, Sean's still on. So I'm, I'm hearing, like maybe, <laughs> tread lightly, <laughs> in the, in the like financial ROI space, or financial impact. Mm -hmm. Not to you, tread lightly, but just like back to the value working group, that it might be super hard to map. Yeah, we can, I can bring this back up to the value group and point them to this discussion as well. Okay. And if they want to try to suss some of these out and develop them, then awesome. But we have okay. other stuff to do here. Okay. Cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> so the next item on the agenda, March 20th, and a SIG meetup. I don't know who put that on there. Yeah, uh, I, me, oh, sorry, <laughs> it's from me. So, you know, uh, we will hold the open, uh, next meetup uh, in the open Europe, the community in China on the Saturday, March 20th. Uh, the meeting is led by the, our SIG team. And uh, so as we, uh, our, our SIG team names a uh, complaints SIG. Uh, I will invite the Open Chain Project, the, the Shen, uh, who from Japan, 
and uh, uh, attend the meeting. And uh, I also want to uh, promote the chaos in that meeting and uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, Asia Pacific meeting, I want to ask you, do you have any uh, anyone interested in that meeting? So, you know, this uh, meeting, uh, we almost a uh, uh, hundred people will attend this meeting, include the open euros customers, banks and uh, energies, uh, enterprises and uh, other uh, companies, tools companies and uh, our uh, partner and uh, uh, blah, blah, the, the academic uh, the, uh, professor and uh, the students, some, some of the in, in, in China. So I think it's a good op opportunity to promote the chaos project in China. So, you know, we, uh, we will hold the meeting the whole day, one, 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 full, full, one full day. So uh, uh, I want to ask uh, uh, any of you are interested in, in this meeting and uh, how, uh, how about the time? Uh, in the morning, uh, I think it's in it's uh, afternoon evening in US, and uh, if in the afternoon, I think it's uh, in the morning in US. Uh, we can talk about the meeting time, okay? Yeah. So, do you have a link to this? Is there is this online? No, or no. Is this, a, this is an internal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's external. The meeting. We, we don't. Uh, 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 almost. Uh, we maybe uh, hold a meeting in Shanghai or Beijing, and uh, 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 the time we, we just uh, to uh, book it on the March twentieth. Uh, yeah, the whole day meeting. Uh, yeah. Uh, the schedule and uh, the agenda, we, we don't have uh, a plan the schedule and agenda. I just uh, to want to ask you if you have interesting to conversation uh, uh, and, and the topic in the meeting and uh, I will arrange it, okay. So, and this is a compliance meetup, like compliance, like licensing compliance and uh, yeah. Kind of stuff? Yeah, because the uh, my uh, our our the our SIG uh, name is a complaint SIG, so it's just uh, only the complaints in the meeting. I want to also show the dashboard. You know, the Open Euros da dashboard is established is studied from a chaos metric system. You know, and uh, uh, Mr. Zhong Jin, the 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 people the, the guy who just uh, shared in the last year Shanghai meetup. She will attend the meeting and uh, uh, share uh, her her uh, dashboard uh, to uh, to the attendance. So I think it's an opportunity to uh, to promote a chaos. Yeah. I'm also thinking if um, with respect to compliance, if I'm trying to think of people who are also involved in the SPDX working group. So SPDX is a Another Linux Foundation project that focuses on license compliance and, and risk compliance. And so maybe I could see if there's some overlap there. And would this be a video, like a video presentation, or is it just something that you would bring forward? Or uh, yeah, Max. Uh, so I think it's uh, not only the uh, compliance meeting. We can oh, also okay. talk about it. Yeah, I see. Yeah, we can okay, also okay. talk about chaos yeah, metrics. Mm -hmm. So, and then is the hope to find like a video presentation or a, like what in the past, or is it yeah. to be live, or is it to? Yeah, I think. Or would it just uh, be you? Uh, I think it's it's okay uh, if you uh, uh, if you uh, okay if the time is uh, available, uh, we can. We can uh, have the meeting online. You can access the meeting. Uh, for example, the uh, the shares hackathon. That, that time I think it's uh, works. It's uh, eight p.m. in okay. In, yeah, yeah, and uh, ten ten a.m. in Beijing. I think it's you can you can face to <laughs> online online to talk about, about this. It's okay, why don't 
how about I'll send you a note? Like, I don't want to commit to anything right now, me personally. <laughs> so, but it, so let me, let me circle back with maybe Elizabeth, maybe you and I can chat about this and maybe Sean, if that works for you and then just send you a note King, like we wouldn't have to wait till the next meeting. Okay. I, I, okay. If you are any process, I, I will update it in the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. And uh, cool. I can email to you. Yeah. Right on. Cool. Uh, this, this meeting, I just I wanted to ask if you are interested in this meetup. Yeah, yeah. No, I thank you for bringing it up. And I think maybe it's just a little coordination on our end. Um, so let's see. The next thing is the hackathon. So Sean is not on, but he is going to do a hackathon. And I think with Augur. No, I'm listen. already registered. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. But I'm not sure I'm able to accept the tea worker on that okay. day. <laughs> Thanks, Shoya. Um, Elizabeth, is this with, do you know some details on this? I don't. Yeah. Yeah. So Sean um, also dropped some notes in the chat as well. Um, but I think this is just an experiment to see, you know, how, how we do, because we did uh, one for the North American and sort of Europe time um, a couple of weeks ago. So we wanted to try to do like a regular hackathon for Asia Pacific as well. Um, so this won't be the only one. This will just kind of be the first one in a series. Um, I think that's Sean's vision as, anyway. Um, so he had the idea of working. Um, so he's built workers for GitHub and GitLab and he wanted to try to emulate those or, or model those into um, something for Gitty. So that's what's gonna be the focus of the hackathon. But obviously, you know, it's gonna kind of depend on um, who is there and, and you know, what their skill levels are and what they want to do. So um, it, that's flexible, I think. Uh, that was just an idea of things that could work on. Um, and then I think moving forward, we're going to try to take those hackathons and use them um, a little more deliberately to help the working groups develop certain metrics. So if there are ideas that we've had in this group um, of, of something that we would like to measure, but we don't know how to get that data out of, of Augur or Grimoire Lab, either one, um, that would be something that we could use the hackathon for, is to take that and, and actually make it happen. Um, uh, and I understand that maybe the last Saturday of the month is not the best day apparently <laughs> to have these. <laughs> um, so we can um, change that moving forward. We just picked a day out at random. So um, we, will, we will change that actually. I'm gonna make a little note here um, just to kind of accommodate, you know, make it a little easier for everyone. Um, so yeah, in the registration, I think uh, I know Shoya has registered. I think Willem also registered. Willem is helping us with this as well. So he's kind of coordinating it on, on that end. Um, I can drop the registration link if I can find it uh, in the minutes and also I'll put it in the chat. So that's pretty much it. Does anyone have questions? Uh, so uh, that's the final uh, time uh, our setup or we just use February 27th as the Yeah, February 27th um, is the is the day and it will be 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I think um, in Beijing time. So was that your question? I was, yeah, I was sure the registration uh, should I think it's anyway. Yeah, I'm having a little hard time hearing you. Shoya is going to share the registration link. She's tracking ah, it down. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> so Shoya, you're actually up next on the agenda. So you have a published yeah. report? Yes. Uh, this is actually a report um, our laboratory was working on through the Chinese New Year. Um, and it's a GitHub inside report. Uh, the link, the report is that is now completely in Chinese, but we are um, thinking of translating it 
uh, translating it into English, and uh, we kind of hope chaos. Maybe, maybe we can have some promotions to chaos. Yeah, actually, I, this would be a perfect candidate, I think, for a blog post. And I think it might even, great. yeah, it might even be great to do the blog. And they can be short. I mean, they can just be say, you know, here's kind of the high level overview of what the report's about. It might also be yes. nice to have the blog post written in Chinese and English, to be honest with you, and link out to both the Chinese and the English report. That would be great because the whole report is, is extremely long, as you may see in the link. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I was looking um, at it. And there is actually some, um, I mean, uh, the, the thing we are doing is kind of, uh, there are some, um, I mean, uh, there is, uh, we are, we, uh, in this report, we are also have some um, metrics, but it's more in uh, from GitHub's perspective, and uh, we kind of um, build a more mathematical model to evaluate and um, to evaluate a project. Like the most classical metric is the activities of a project, and uh, we uh, consider consider like uh, we consider issue PR as different weights. Of the final score and uh, make a calculation, and I think maybe we can um, after the report has uh, been translated into English. We can, I think I mean there is something common we can we can working on this together. That'd be great. Thank you, Shoya. Um, so I had, we have just a few minutes here and there were a few things that I just wanted to bring up with respect to general chaos updates. One is, um, I just would like to mention that Google season of docs, Shoya, which you participated in, in the past, it's changing a little bit this year. And they're looking for, from what I can kind of understand, they're looking for more kind of established relationships between communities and technical writers or people who have helped with documentation. So Shoy, I think there's a, if you're interested, I just would like to make sure that you um, know that this is happening. The Chaos Project will be submitting a season of docs proposal again. And the way that it works is Elizabeth, you can kind of help me remember, but I think there's $15,000 that up to that could be awarded from Google to essentially pay technical writers. Am I remembering this right, Elizabeth? You are. Okay. Yeah, you're doing and great. And then <laughs> within the chaos project, we can kind of define chaos as an organization can kind of define areas where um, technical writing could be um, supported. And so those could be places like Grimoire Lab, they could be Augur, they could just be the chaos community in general. And so um, it just this is just for you, Shoya, that if you're interested, this is going to be happening. You know, there's no promise this would be an open call to everybody, but um, obviously you participated in the past. It was fantastic. And we really appreciated all of your help and support. And we know you, and that's all good. So I just wanted to put this at, yeah, um, in front of you. So uh, I'm not sure uh, if you wish, like, uh, wish me to help uh, with uh, the season of doc mentoring, or you could um, all you could help mentor, or you could also apply. So we've had this oh. conversation with Josh Karat. Okay. So. Josh Karat, who also helped with the community handbook. You remember last yeah. year too? I, yep. And yes. so we had asked if he wanted to mentor. You can't do both. You can't mentor and apply. <laughs> it seemed seem okay. weird. So okay. um, so just, of course, if you want to help mentor, that would be, we would welcome your support. Um, but if you would also like to apply, that's also something that we would we would encourage. Yeah, you. I, I, I have, I actually uh, have thinking of apply again, but I'm not sure if this is how it works. I'm not sure if it, it, it will looks like where to 
apply for a second time. I, I have a sense that they're that that's not discouraged in this round, that it's okay to be a second time person. And I even feel like the call is towards more established relationships, which would, which is you and Josh Kirat, to be honest with you. So people who have been involved in this before, so. Yeah, I'm interested, I will, uh, uh, look the okay, and I can share that with you as well. So just, and you can make a choice whether or not you want to apply or mentor, but that would be your choice. Um, Matt, okay. I think is yeah. the is the deadline for that March twenty sixth? Is that right? Yeah. So we okay. yes exactly. So you have, so a, we have a little about time. A month. I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have to decide oh, today. <laughs> on this. Oh, call. that's a that's application deadline for I think suppliers. So. I think that's the deadline the for the organizations, for us, oh. for chaos. Oh. And then, oh. and then you would have a little bit of time even beyond that. Yeah. So you have time. Right. Um, and then I guess just maybe in the last couple minutes, just we have a couple initiatives at the chaos project. One is uh, the community reports, and one is we provide support for events that are interested in. Um, supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. We have badged, it's really a cool program. We've been badging up to five events so far, Linux Foundation and other events. Uh, we have a sixth in review at the moment. So this is just taking the diversity, equity, and inclusion metrics and helping events think uh, through these important issues. And so this has been really great. So if, this is there's always a call if if you would like to help uh, as a de and I reviewer that would be wonderful or if you have an event that would like to kind of think through their own diversity equity and inclusion issues you can apply for a badge and we have been applying those um, and yesterday I just from an outreach perspective kind of interesting um, we had a chance to talk with Automotive Grade Linux, so the community managers at Automotive Grade Linux to try to find um, connections between their really cool project and chaos. And also um, LF Edge. So Edge is, is it, network, is it networking? I kind of forget what it is. I, I forget too, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> It's, it's computing at the edge. So it's, it's a bit of networking. Okay. It's a bit of like distributed systems. So they were both super nice. Walt and Aaron, Walt from Auto, Automotive Grade Linux. So we're slowly working with them to try to provide insights for the communities that, that like edge supports and then also that AGL supports as well. So we're pretty happy about that. Um, so I think that's mostly the updates. Oh, there is a, a pull request on translations, do you see it there in the minutes? I could use a little bit of help on <laughs> either merging that pull request or not merging it because Yeah, I because know. I'm I'm not <laughs> sure if uh, we should merge that pull request because if that that expression changed all the ex all expressions in the translated version should be changed for that expression. Okay, so, so that's the sure. that's the hesitation at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll put a note on that. That the that the concern is is that if this if this is merged, um, then there's kind of cascading effects that this merge would have. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll leave it at that. We are at the end of time, everybody. Okay. Good Thanks, everybody. It's good to see Bye. everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. See you later. See you.